today there are more than 300 million yoga practitioners across the whole world. The yoga industry is worth $80 billion globally. Yoga marketing has eclipsed the original purpose of yoga. The purpose of yoga is not to combat stress, keeping healthy, feeling good, making money or livelihood. The purpose of yoga is self-realization and connecting with the Supreme. Yoga is meant to free you from worldliness and bodily identification. If you really want to practice yoga, then follow the authorized path of the Bhagavad Gita and the Yoga Sutras. Krishna defines yoga in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Yoga sta kuru karmani sangam tektva dhananjaya siddhi asidhyo samo bhutva samatvam yoga uchyate Perform your duty equipoised, O Arjuna, abandoning all attachment to success and failure. Such equanimity is called yoga. Yoga then is defined as indifference or evenness of mind. Calming the mind is yoga, not just standing on the head. Yoga teaches us to cure what need not be endured and endure what cannot be cured. The literal meaning of the word yoga is yok, means to connect. Yoga can therefore be defined as a means of uniting the individual spirit with the universal spirit of God. Patanjali's famous definition of yoga is Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodha which means removal of the fluctuations of the mind. A flower does not think of competing with the flower next to it. It just blooms. The Bhagavad Gita presents the essence of the yoga in the following 25 points. Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One must accept this on faith or at least theoretically for the purpose of understanding yoga. Bhagavad Gita is Lord Krishna's absolute statement and as such is not subject to speculative interpretation. Bhagavad Gita is consistent and has a particular theme and conclusion. The Gita can be quoted as authority and as such it is authoritative in verifying its own purpose. The Gita is part of the Vedic Smriti Shastra scripture. It is known as the Gita Upanishad and its conclusion must concur with that of the body of the Vedic text. As Krishna is the perfect teacher, so Arjuna is the perfect student of the Gita. The perfect understanding of the Gita is that which concurs with Arjuna's understanding. The theme of the Bhagavad Gita is how to free oneself from the bewildering materialistic condition of life, known as the bodily concept. The solution to the false bodily conception of life and its consequent problems can be approached by Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga and Bhakti Yoga. The actual solution to the problems of life is complete realization of one's own original spiritual nature. This is possible only by Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga is the independent goal of the yoga ladder. However, all other yoga systems are dependent on Bhakti. The reasons Sri Krishna mentions other yoga systems is to attract different types of conditioned soul to his devotional service. Bewilderment is due to illusion or ignorance. A solution to Arjuna's problem must be based on knowledge. Knowledge means understanding the absolute truth. The absolute truth is Lord Sri Krishna. Bhagavad Gita is the means for understanding the will of the Lord. Solving the problems of life is included in and is an element of knowledge. The solution comprises recognizing the problem, identifying the goal, the absolute truth and the solution itself, Ananya Bhakti devotional service as a means of knowing him. Krishna is known by unalloyed devotion. Unalloyed devotion as a solution means that karma, jnana, etc. are meant to approach the problem. Bhakti Yoga is not only the means for knowing Krishna, but also for coming to Krishna. The nature of devotion induces the Lord to reciprocate with his devotees. This is known as revelation. That revelation is the understanding that we are spiritual entities. Distinct from this world, part and parcel and servants of Lord Krishna. It is this knowledge by which one becomes attached to the Lord and detached from the world. That is the solution to life's problem. All problems of life and problems in executing bhakti are overcome by the grace of Krishna. If one rejects his grace, acting under ignorance, one will continue to suffer. This knowledge and understanding is the final conclusion of the Vedas.